Welcome back to Teacher Net Explains channel. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and leave a comment. Now that you know how to represent a rational function in terms of an equation, a table of values, and a graph, this time we'll define each of the two variables it involves, which usually are named as x and y. Like any graph, the graph of a rational function is composed of points, a set of points. Each of these points has x and y. Now, collect all x's or abscissa. Separate all y's or ordinates. And they form two groups. The group of x values is termed domain. And the group of y values is called range. Now, determine the domain and range of f of x equals x plus 2 all over x minus 1. Let us determine first the domain. So look at x. Notice that there is x in the denominator. Since every denominator can, cannot be equal to 0, then the presence of x in the denominator will affect the domain. That is, denominator x minus 1 cannot be equal to 0. By solving, x is not equal to 1. This is the restriction for x values. And aside from 1, all other real numbers can, can be values of x. Therefore, the domain of the given function is set of real numbers except for positive 1. It can be written using set builder notation. Domain is the set of x such that x is an element of all real numbers but x is not equal to positive 1. Or, through interval notation, domain is the union of the intervals from negative infinity to positive 1 exclusive and from positive 1 exclusive to positive infinity. Okay? We have open parenthesis or and close parenthesis for positive 1 in the first interval and open parenthesis for positive 1 in the second interval since positive 1 is not included. Had it been included, then we will be using brackets. Now, to solve for the range, let us go back to the given function f of x equals x plus 2 all over x minus 1. Take note that f of x can also be expressed as y. So this can also be expressed as y equals x plus 2 all over x minus 1. The goal is to define x in terms of y in order to see if there will be any restriction for y values. That is, in getting the range, we, we will isolate x or positive 1x on one side of the equation. So xy equal or xy minus y equals x plus 2. That is done by multiplication property of equality or by MPE. Then we have by APE we have xy minus x equals 2 plus y. That's by addition property of equality. The technique to reach the goal is to write all x's on the left-hand side of the equation. Then we have x times quantity y minus 1 equals 2 plus y. That's done by factoring since the common factor of xy and of negative x is x. Then we have x equals 2 plus y all over y minus 1. That is by multiplication property of equality or by MPE. That's done by multiplying both sides of the equation, of the previous equation, by 1 over y minus 1. Therefore, y cannot be 1. Because if y equals 1, the denominator is 0. Hence, the range is the set of all real numbers except for positive 1. In set builder notation, that is, range is the set of y, such that y is an element of real numbers, but y is not equal to positive 1. Or in interval notation, range is the union of the intervals from negative infinity to positive 1 exclusive and from positive 1 exclusive to positive infinity. That is, from negative infinity to positive infinity, excluding or not including positive 1. By constructing a table of values, this is what you will get. And this will be the graph. The collective x values are all real numbers except for x equals 1. There is no point in the graph which has abscissa 1 denoted by the vertical broken line 
called as vertical asymptote. The graph only approaches positive 1 from the left and from the right but not touches it. That is why the domain is all real numbers except for positive 1. On the other hand, y values of the points are all real numbers except for positive 1. That is why there is a horizontal line which is the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. 1 cannot be a value of y. That explains the range all real numbers except y equals 1. Determining the domain is easy since you will just solve for x values which will make the denominator 0. And that is what the restriction, what's the restriction in the domain. On the other hand, looking at another perspective, determining the range of a rational function can be done easier. Notice that the domain which is related to the vertical asymptote in a way that the vertical asymptote determines those which cannot be values of x, in the same way, the range is related to the horizontal asymptote because this horizontal asymptote determines those which cannot be y values. And there is a technique there. Let n be the degree of numerator or highest exponent in the numerator. In the numerator. m be the degree of the denominator or highest exponent in the denominator. a be the leading coefficient of the numerator. And b the leading coefficient of the denominator. If n equals m, the horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b. If n is greater than m, there is no horizontal asymptote. And if n is less than m, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Going back to our example f of x equals x plus 2 all over x minus 1, since n or the highest exponent of the numerator is 1, and since m or the highest exponent of the denominator is positive 1, then n equals m. And since a or the leading coefficient of the numerator is 1, and b or the leading coefficient of the denominator is 1, then recall that the rule is if n equals m, horizontal asymptote is y equals y equals a over b. So horizontal asymptote of the given function is y equals 1 over 1, or simply y equals 1. Therefore, y is not equal to positive 1 in the graph, which tells us that the range is set of all real numbers except for positive 1. Let us consider another example. Determine the domain and range of f of x equals 2x minus 1 all over negative x plus 3. The domain is denominator cannot be 0. That is, negative x plus 3 is not equal to 0. Negative x is not equal to negative 3. So, x is not equal to positive 3. Therefore, the domain is x such that x is an element of real numbers but x is not equal to positive 3. Or the domain is the union of the intervals from negative infinity to positive 3 exclusive and from positive 3 exclusive to positive infinity. That is not including positive 3. For the range, since m equals 1 and n equals 1, a equals 2, b equals negative 1, and since n equals m, then horizontal asymptote is y equals a over b. That is, y equals 2 over negative 1 or simply y equals negative 2. Thus, the range is y such that y is an element of real numbers but y is not equal to negative 2. Or it's the union of the intervals from negative infinity to negative 2 exclusive and from negative 2 exclusive to positive infinity. Now, can you determine the domain and range faster? Third example, determine the domain and range of f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 4 all over x plus 1. Ready? Since denominator x plus 1 is not equal to 0, then x is not equal to negative 1. Hence, domain 
is x such that x is an element of real numbers, but x is not equal to negative 1. For the range, n equals 2, m equals 1, a equals 1, b equals 1. If n is greater than m, there is no horizontal asymptote. So there's no restricted value for 1. Thus, the range of the function is y such that y is an element of real numbers. Fourth example, define the domain and range of f of x equals 2x minus 3 all over x squared minus 9. Since denominator x squared minus 9 is not equal to 0, then by zero product property, but this time let's change equal sign to not equal sign because we're concerned about what values cannot be, um, cannot be values of x. So we have x minus 3 times quantity x plus 3 is not equal to 0. For, for this, review your factoring technique. We just factored out the, the denominator x squared minus 9 and its factors are x minus 3 and x plus 3. Now we have x minus 3 is not equal to 0 and x plus 3 is not equal to 0. For x minus 3 is not equal to 0, we have x is not equal to positive 3. And for x plus 3 is not equal to 0, that is, x is not equal to negative 3. Thus, the domain is x such that x is an element of real numbers, but x is not equal to 3, and x is not equal to negative 3. Or the domain is the union of the intervals from negative infinity to negative 3 exclusive, from negative 3 exclusive to positive 3 exclusive, and from positive 3 exclusive to positive infinity. That is excluding positive 3 and negative 3. So now, solving for the range n equals 1, m equals 2, b equals 1, and a equals 2. Okay? So recall that if n is less than m, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Then y is not equal to 0, and range is y such that y is an element of real numbers, but y is not equal to 0. Or is the union of the intervals from negative infinity to 0 exclusive, and from 0 exclusive to positive infinity. So you have just learned how to determine the domain and range of rational functions. Until next time!